The Shimano eTube project software, which is used to configure, update, and diagnose DI2 components, comes in three flavors. That is a Windows version, a smartphone version, and a tablet version. The smartphone and tablet versions require the Bluetooth module to be installed on your DI2 system to connect to, and the Windows version uses these. This is the battery charger, so the BCR2 is what I have here, so you charge your DI2 with this, but it also doubles as a USB data connection, so you can use Windows to connect to your DI2 system. I won't be using that today in this video. I will be using this one here, which is what you'll see at a bike store, most likely. It's the SMPCE1, there's also the PCE2, and this can be used to connect to a system or a single component. And with that, we can do diagnostics and firmware updates, but what I have in front of me is a Mac. And without a native version of the eTube project software running on this machine, I'm out of luck. However, there is a way to solve this problem. The way I've gone about that is using VirtualBox from Oracle, which is a free download, version 6.1 I've installed on this Mac. There are other virtual machine options you can use, but VirtualBox is the one I'm using on this Mac. I've downloaded the Windows 10 ISO from Microsoft and installed Windows 10 Home. No product key required for this install, and Microsoft does allow anybody to download Windows 10 for free and install without a product key, and it will keep working for the foreseeable future with only a few small cosmetic restrictions. So for a single purpose, single use virtual box, you can do this without paying a license fee. Side note, if you're a company or you're gonna be using this quite a lot for your business, you're gonna to have to pay for a license key for Windows. Windows Home is just fine. Once installed, enabling the .NET framework on that virtual machine, installing the eTube project software, obviously for Windows, and running the eTube project as administrator, I've had the best results with. So the task at hand today does have a purpose, and I've picked up some more parts for my upgrade project. So I now have an updated battery. If you recall the giant TCR rim brake bike that I have, it had the BTR2 battery installed, which doesn't allow for synchro shift or the wireless module to be installed. So I've picked up this, for around half retail on a second-hand forum or a pre-owned forum with people selling parts. This is the BTDN110, so the same battery that I run on my giant TCR disc bike. This will allow for synchro shift and the Bluetooth module. There's extra smarts in that for that configuration. So today I'm going to connect all this up via the Mac on a virtual machine. We'll run some diagnostics on the battery, make sure it has the latest firmware, and I have these to install. Yes, upgrades for my upgrades that I've just upgraded to. Oh, it's a vicious circle. So these are current generation DI2 Shimano Durace rim brake levers. These are the R9150, left and right, obviously. Pick these up for $350 Australian, which is around 250 US. They look in absolute mint condition, and with a bargain like that, could not pass it up. So we're gonna be checking out these, connecting to them, making sure they've got the latest firmware, running the diagnostics, and in a few days or weeks, maybe we'll install these on the giant TCR. So that's what we're up to today. Mac, PC link, component checks, eTube software for Windows. Let's see it in action. Okay, with the Windows virtual machine booted up, it's time to connect the PC link via USB. Now, once plugged in, that's connected only to the Mac. We do need to drop down to the bottom tray there and make sure the USB device is connected to the virtual machine. And you can hear just there, Windows has picked up on that. And remembering the .NET framework has also been installed along with the EQ project. We right click, run as administrator. I always get the best results running this as administrator. Okay on that. So from this menu here, if we were connecting the PC link to an entire DI2 system, I would connect to road, mountain bike or urban city, but I'm connecting just a single components. So it's this single component connection we need there. It'll go off and check for new versions of everything. Now here is possibly a sticking point, but I can show you how to get through it. So next, this is the connection. Okay, connect the PCI link here. So it says connect it, but there's nothing happening here. So this should be connected. If we drop down to the USB menu, disconnect, reconnect again. Still no dice. Reconnect again. Still no dice. And third time, we are in. Cool, so you may have to do that a few times to get it connected or not. Three times and we're good to go. I've always found once it's connected, 
once it's correctly recognized that USB device via the virtual software, it's all good to go. Okay, so no unit is detected. Well, obviously we haven't plugged anything in yet. So that's as we expect. We'll cancel that one out. Go back to the main menu. And whilst that takes place, we will plug the battery in. As I said, once it connects and establishes that connection, it's good to go from there on in. It's just that initial jump with this virtualization, but it does work. Okay, here we go, detecting the battery. Bingo. One unit, excellent. DN110, and it tells me there's a firmware update. Fantastic, latest version of the firmware of the following units is available. Da, da, da. Okay, first of all, we'll run an error check. I've got no idea of the history of these components, so error checking is going to be a good thing to do. Select all, start diagnostics. A fault could not be found. Fantastic, we are good. Next up, let's get this firmware updated. Now the firmware on there is currently 4.4.2. Quickly jumping over to the Shimano Ichu website to find out what the latest firmware is and what updates it gives us. Uh, 4.4.4 is out as of Feb 2019, so the battery hasn't been updated since then. Bug fixes for the battery consumption when combining with DI2 system. Bit ambiguous, but let's roll with that. Sounds good to me. Back over to the virtual box, update firmware. Let's get it done. All looks good. Complete on that. Perform another error check. 444 is installed. There we go, one down, two more to go. Job done, okay, battery is good to be installed. Next up, we'll go the right lever first. Am I using a sprint shifter on that? No, I am not. Okay, it's detected the right lever correctly. It's the STR9150 without sprinter switch, yes. Error check, select all. Okay, button check time. Done, next switch. Done, next switch, hidden one on the top. Done, all passes, complete. Rock and roll. Update firmware, we'll do a firmware check, three, two, one. It's on the latest version. We are good to go. That was super fast on that one. I expect the same from the other given these come as a set. Complete setup on that one. And over to the left side, same deal. every single time it works now. Once you've got that initial USB connection with the virtualization working, it works for everything. Not using the sprinter switch. STR9150 left. That's what we're hoping it was going to be. Error check on that, start diagnostics. Okay, so over here, big button. All good, next switch, little button, good. Next switch, hidden button on the top. A fault could not be found, excellent. And 321, which is the latest update of the firmware, we'll double click on that and just double check. Yep, it's all good, there we are. Today's task is complete. 
Okay, so as I tidy everything up here and go down to the Llama Lab and start preparing the next round of upgrades on that bike, there we have it, the eTube project software for Windows running on a Mac. That was using the VirtualBox with the Windows 10 Home installation, .NET and the eTube project installed. You did see it was a little clumsy getting the USB device to recognize the first time, but once it was connected, we could run through all the process and it was good. Remembering if you don't have the PC link, this process will still work with a Mac with the standard connector, which you can jump in, do firmware updates, do your configuration and everything hardwired to your DI2 system. So if you don't have a Windows system, you are not completely stuck. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and it gets people out of a pickle if you don't have a Windows machine.